I'm Mathieu, I'm a French experimental photographer and I run a vintage camera YouTube channel. Today I'm going to walk you through the restoration of a 60-year-old Edixa camera. Edixa cameras are pretty rare to find. They were made in West Germany in the 60s and they have something really special, the viewfinder that lets you see from the top what your photo will look like. When I saw the camera on, on the table at the yard sale, at first glance, I saw that the camera was really filthy, really dirty. The skin cover was falling apart. The foam inside that protect the mirror was totally dry. And lastly, there was a razor blade in the middle of the viewfinder. So I was pretty surprised when I opened the camera. First, to have access to the razor blade, I need to remove the prism. Now that I have access to the focusing screen, I can remove the razor blade. Next, I remove the old flaking skin from the outside of the camera. A camera skin is the faux leather that covers the camera. Because of time and sweat, the laser starts to peel off or to rot, and so it's important to change it. Next, I replace the old dried foam with a new set of foam that will protect the mirror. On every film camera, you have a little strip of foam that will protect the mirror. Most of the time with age, the foam dries and you need to replace it. I change all my vintage cameras foam because most of the time when you buy them, you don't check and you realize after that, that your mirror just broke. Once I remove the old skin of the camera, I have under it this gluey, disgusting residue. And if the skin fell long before, sometimes you have a lot of dirt and hairs that accumulated on the body of the camera. This residue of glue is easily removed by using acetone. So I'm just using acetone and some tissue and I'm rubbing the surface to remove any trace of glue. Then I remove the base plate of the camera. I use the blower to remove any dirt from the inside of the camera. I saw no problem, so I just clean the base plate and put it back. To replace the black paint on the camera body, I used a black permanent marker because it's almost impossible to remove it. So if you have sweaty palms or it's raining on the camera, it will not affect the permanent marker. After that, I clean the dials. I'm using a specific Q-tip with a really sharp edge to remove the dirt inside the small letters. I use also some rubbing alcohol to dissolve the grease and the old dirt. The more you can get back the original color of the letters, the better the camera will look. Next, I'm cleaning the frame. It's all metal, so just a toothbrush will do perfectly. And with the rubbing alcohol, I can remove most of the grease and old dirt. To clean even further the camera body, I use an eraser that is really good for removing the really fine particles on the metal. After the frame is clean, I need to clean the mirror. On the surface of the mirror, you can find fungus. Cleaning the mirror is pretty tricky. You can't clean a mirror with any kind of tissue because it can make some marks on the mirror. So for this, I used a really soft Q-tip with rubbing alcohol. After that, I open and clean inside the prism because it's the part that is the most dirty. When you take apart the prism, you need to be careful to not drop anything because just one chip in the glass and your image will be less interesting. Inside the prism uh, viewfinder, you can see a lot of grease and dirt 
the owner before maybe just kept it on the table in the dust accumulated inside the viewfinder and it was pretty disgusting. For that, I just need to use dish soap and water and it will remove most of the grease on it. With the years and years and years of dust piling up on the lens and with a little bit of grease or someone smoking, it can create this kind of greasy surface. If I want my camera to last longer, I will store it just in a box or in its official case anywhere, but just not in open air. Next, I'm going to clean the focusing screen. The focusing screen is one of the most important parts of your camera because it's where you will see your image form and it will help you frame and focus your final photo. Because the focusing screen is all glass, I just used some dish soap to clean it. And because it's a pretty robust glass, I used a toothbrush because there is no real risk of leaving any scratches on it. Now that the camera is cleaned, I will apply a new skin on it. This specific skin comes from Hugo Studio, which is a company that creates custom-made skins for people who want, like me, to restore vintage film cameras. The glue under the new skin is really strong, and if you put it on the wrong spot, it will be stuck in the wrong place. For this camera, I wanted to use a crocodile faux leather I wanted to give the camera a fancy look. If you don't care, you can just add some gaffer tape on it and it will work the same to protect the camera, but it will not look as good. Lastly, I want to add my personal touch on the camera. So I add a custom made orange dot on the rewinding lever. Next, I'm just touching up some of the paint that is missing on the letters. For this camera, at least, I used Umbral enamel paint. When I found the camera at the yard sale, I bought it for 10 euros and it was in pretty bad shape. But now that I fixed it and gave it a new skin, you could sell it for between 200 to 300 euros. But for me, I will keep it in my collection because I, I like it. When you look through the viewfinder, you can really see the world through the lens of the Edixa. It makes some beautiful photos and it's a really magical tool to create beautiful images.